Hi everyone. On this episode of Mixing with Mercs, we're going to be going over a super simple way to make pancakes. We're going to be making plain pancakes, chocolate chip pancakes, blueberry pancakes, and banana pancakes. But possibly the most important part of this is that we're going to be making our own homemade pancake mix. A lot more people have expressed a desire to make things that have less preservatives in them and they'd like to know more about what's going into their food. So this pancake mix has all-purpose flour, baking soda, baking powder, salt, sugar, buttermilk powder, and vanilla powder. And all of these ingredients can be sourced from whatever places that you prefer to get your ingredients so that you're able to make the choices in those ingredients that are right for your family. And that's what I love about this recipe is that it's incredibly customizable. So to start out with, you're going to put your flour into a large bowl. And if you're making the large batch, you might have to use a very, very large bowl. And make sure you give yourself enough space to mix in because we are going to be mixing up all of the different dry ingredients that we put in there. We're also going to be adding a vanilla bean powder into this. And this is going to save you from needing to add vanilla when you add in your wet ingredients. And you can get your vanilla bean powder however you'd like to and this particular vanilla bean powder only has the one ingredient of ground vanilla beans. You can also add any cinnamon or other spices if you'd like to or wait and add those on a per batch basis based on what your family enjoys and that's why I love this recipe is it's customizable to any way that you'd like to. You're going to add your baking powder, baking soda, and salt. and also add in your sugar as well. Then we're gonna be adding in a buttermilk powder and this only has two ingredients in it and that is cream and cultured buttermilk. So it's a really simple um, buttermilk powder that I was able to find. This saves you from needing to buy buttermilk. I have a really bad habit of not remembering to buy buttermilk when I'm getting ready to make pancakes. And so this is a great way to not have to remember it every time you make pancakes. Buttermilk adds a great flavor to the final recipe. So this is a great way to make sure that you have that flavor without having to remember to buy another ingredient. After that, you're gonna mix it up well and use it immediately if you're just making a small amount. So I'm just making the one batch for this video but you can make as much as you'd like to if you're storing you want to shake it well to mix before each mix before each use so you can just shake the whole container up to make sure that everything is incorporated well before you begin and that is how to make your basic pancake mix so this is going to seem like we're not following a traditional muffin method recipe but our mix is going to be our dry ingredients and the remainder of the recipe is going to be our wet ingredients So now we're going to be going through the steps of making the batter. And this is going to make about 20 pancakes. So for each two and a half cups of dry mix, you're going to use two cups of water or milk. We're using water because the buttermilk is already in the recipe. The water is just going to complete that. You're going to use three eggs. If you want thinner pancakes, two for thicker pancakes. Just keep in mind you might get maybe 18 or 19 pancakes instead of the 20 if you use the two eggs and then about half a stick of butter or four tablespoons of that, and you're gonna melt that. So go ahead and preheat your griddle once you start mixing your wet ingredients, and then you're gonna crack your eggs and whisk those. Then you're gonna add in your melted butter and water and whisk that together thoroughly. And you want to get this as combined as possible before you add your dry ingredients because once you add your dry ingredients then we're going to start to get that gluten formation which is going to make it tough. You add your dry on top of your wet and mix it until it's barely combined. Lumps are okay. The more you wet mix the tougher those pancakes are going to be and we don't want chewy pancakes. Gluten formation starts as soon as the wet and dry combine. I like to use a scoop for even size and it took about three-fourths of a scoop and you're going to scoop the batter onto a griddle or a pan whatever you have is fine 
I'm using a number 12 disher. I love using scoops in general and dishers are what you use in food service pretty regularly. The number 12 references that it's, there's 12 of those that make a quart and about three fourths full works for three pancakes on a 12 inch pan or griddle. This is a crepe maker that I'm using. You know they're ready to flip when you see a lot of bubbles on the surface and they're starting to dry on the edges like the one on the bottom. It may seem strange that I'm using a crepe maker instead of a griddle, but it takes up less room in my cabinet. It works great for crepes as well and it's also wonderful for warming tortillas. So you're gonna flip them by sliding the turner gently underneath there and then turn it over quickly close to the surface. Um, the further away from the surface that you get, the more of those bubbles you're gonna pop, so be gentle with this process. And once that second side is cooked about three-fourths as long as the first one, you're gonna flip it over. Um, just flip one over to kind of check for doneness and then remove them to the plate if they are done. So a lot of people will make all of their batter a certain flavor, but when it comes to toppings for pancakes, you can actually just add them on the griddle directly. So to make chocolate chip pancakes, we're just gonna sprinkle a few chocolate chips directly on the batter on the griddle. And then you follow your same procedure for flipping. For blueberry pancakes, frozen blueberries actually work really, really well for this. Just keep in mind that this will take a little bit longer to cook than the others just because the blueberries will be colder. And you're gonna flip these as you did the others as well. So we're going to follow the same process for banana pancakes. If they are overripe, they taste even better. Um, also, you can add some chocolate chips to these as well if you want to make it um, a little bit extra fancy. And flip and remove these as before. If you're using overripe bananas, keep in mind that you will get a little bit of residue on your griddle, so you may need to wipe down the griddle after you've done those. So as you'll notice, I'm realizing that the griddle is pretty dirty. Just carefully wipe it down with a dry cloth. If you use a wet cloth, you're more likely to burn yourself. and then just keep making pancakes until you run out of batter. So this is a great way to make pancakes for the entire family if nobody can decide which type of pancakes that they want. Every single person in the family can have their favorite type without you having to make a fresh type of batter. You can have chocolate chips, you can have blueberries, you can have different types of fruit. It's also a great way to get your kids involved in the kitchen and it's a great way for them to figure out their own likes and dislikes and to add some extra fruit into their diet. Thank you so much for joining us on Mixing with Mercs and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.